I've just popped down to my local coffee shop. In fact, I cycled down to my local coffee shop, Costa. There are other brands available, of course. And uh, very often when I'm having a cup of coffee, I get an idea for a video. And it was while I'm having a cup of coffee a couple of days ago that uh, I had an idea for my next video. Well, hello once again, and thank you for joining me on the Waters and Stanton video channel. I've been experimenting recently with the Ampro antennas, and this is one of them. They're helically wound antennas. They've got a helically wind, helical winding at the bottom, and then halfway up it goes into a whip, and you adjust that whip to resonate the antenna. This particular antenna is designed for 20 meters. Now, if you've been watching my videos recently, um, I've been experimenting with the Ampro Aerial as a base vertical. Um, I think I called it a pop-up vertical. It's a vertical you put in your garden and you mount this antenna um, fairly close to the ground, say about a metre or half a metre above the ground, put one radial on it. The radial is directional. It's directional in the point in the direction of the radial. Single radial and this uh, antenna in the air. Now these antennas are about 2.25 meters high so the 20 meter antenna is half the size of a full-size vertical so it's fairly efficient and as I said I've been doing um, a video on these uh, the one that uh, I just mentioned using it as a base station in the garden it works extremely well I've had um, lots and lots of contacts on it and it's no more than one uh, S point down on my dipole really. I mean there are some occasions when there's differences because it's vertically polarised the dipole's horizontally polarised. But basically I'm, I'm quite amazed how well it works. And then I did a video more recently showing how to mount it on a vehicle and uh, what, you know one or two of the adjustments you need to make and one or two precautions you need to make. Well for the third video really in this series I suppose I thought I'd try it as a dipole, I'd try a pair of these as a dipole. Now, I've always been a bit sceptical about uh, making dipoles with two mobile whips because I thought well, the, the feed impedance is going to be very low and is it really going to work? Well, I thought there's only one way to find out whether it's going to work is to try it out, particularly as I've been sceptical. So the first thing you need is a bracket and I'll just show you this bracket now. This is a bracket uh, that we sell and it enables you to mount two uh, mobile antennas. Uh, these antennas by the way have got 3 8 inch threads so two mobile antennas with 3 8 inch threads. You mount one either side and if you look carefully you'll see that one side has got an SO239 on it and the other side has got nothing at all and that's because one side of the uh, or one of the um, uh, elements of the or one of the mobile antennas is going to be connected to the earthy side of your coax so it doesn't need to be insulated at all. The other mobile antenna connected to the inner conductor of the coax cable. So if you look at the bracket you've got an SO239 on one side and just a standard earthed mount on the other. And if you put those two antennas onto the bracket you have the basis of a dipole. Now this is the bracket mounted on a telescopic mast. By the way, um, I've used one of these fiberglass telescopic masts. These masts are incredibly strong and rigid. Again, we saw these masts and uh, they've got a, um, a lock-in attachment there. Let's turn this around a bit. They've got a lock-in attachment there and if you lift this up you can raise the antenna like that or raise the mast like that and I'm struggling with one hand here and if you push it down there you lock it. So I've got on this um, mast the bracket and you see that's the uh, SO239 socket there, I've got a coax cable going to it, PL259 coax cable going to it. Um, one antenna goes in that side and the other antenna goes in that side and I've also got a very crude but effective line isolator. That means to say that I completely isolate the coax the shield from the antenna on that side, the earthy antenna. Now I couldn't mount this on the top section of the mast because this U-bolt um, wouldn't go down. This uh, diameter of this section is 34mm and up there it's 28mm. 
So in order to mount it on the top, I'd have to make a collar. It should be very difficult to make a collar, but for test purposes, I wasn't too worried about that. But if you do have a mask like this, uh, by the way, I think this goes up to around about 22 or 23 feet. Uh, we do do uh, large ones as well, but for test purposes, this was adequate. So it will go on to something like 34 mil. If you've got something thinner like the top section of this mask, then you need to make a collar. But as I say, that shouldn't be too difficult. Now mounting the elements is pretty simple. You just need to take the weight um, of the element, and in this case on the right hand, um, so that we can uh, easily screw it in. And then just line the other one up and uh, screw it in. Make sure you screw it in firmly. And it's rather like walking on a tightrope. We have these bars across where um, they balance themselves. So it's pretty well balanced now. These have got a, these masks, by the way, have got a stop. Oops, is that a stop? I think it is. It's, oh no, it hasn't. There we are, it's stopped, and then you lock it like that. Then likewise, you find the lever. Next one down, which is thicker. And again, put it up there. And, and in fact, you can lock it anywhere you like. Uh, yes, it's, uh, this, is just, this hasn't been connected yet. I've got a, um, uh, this, I've got this like this, so I can put a, an SWR meter or an antenna analyzer on it. And uh, there you see the antenna up in there. It's only up about, probably about 12 feet at the moment, so it would go up to twice that height. But uh, even at that height, it actually works quite well. I've had uh, contacts on it when I've just been raising it about that sort of height. Now, I came across a problem which um, I will explain. I covered it in the previous video, um, but you may not have seen the video. Let me just show you. Um, I unscrew this. This this whip uh, telescopes up and down, and of course it telescopes inside the wind in here because this is this is hollow. It has to be hollow to take the um, the whip going in and out, and I suppose to save weight. But if I unscrew this, you'll start to see the problem. There we are. This whip will go in and out of this um, little uh, section here, which has got uh, 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 Allen keys on it. In fact, in fact, uh, you can see it'll slide up and down. And normally that would be tight, so you can't move it. And of course, once it's tightened, it's, it's pre-tuned, and if you, if you take it off, put it in, pack, pack it away, so it's two sections, it's not a problem. But this is the problem. When this goes in there, it actually acts as a, a core. It's an iron core, really. And as it goes in, it's going in there. And as it goes in there, it starts to cause the Q, the whole Q of the antenna to be lowered, and you start to get losses. Now, normally, when you adjust an antenna, you would expect, as you put it in there, it goes higher in frequency. As you take it out, it goes lower in frequency, because the whole element is longer. In this particular case, there comes a point where it starts to go in far enough to actually actually increase the inductance of the antenna. And therefore, what you find is it starts to go lower in frequency. Not only does it go lower in frequency, it starts to deteriorate. You'll see losses occur, and I'll show you in a minute how the SWR deteriorates quite remarkably. Now, I've had to, to avoid this, I've actually had to cut this, and I cut to eight millimeters off this um, in order to stop that happening. But as you can see, um, I could actually cut a bit more if I'm reluctant to at the moment, because I'm still making adjustments. But basically, if you use the element as it comes from the factory, um, on this arrangement, you'll find that you start to get very poor SWR. And the reason for that is there's too much of this going inside the inside of this antenna. I cut eight millimeters off, and that's okay. But you see, even, even so, there's quite a bit going in there. I could afford to lose another sort of 10 or 15 millimeters quite easily, I guess. Now, let me show you the VSWR I got at Resonance. 
by shortening those elements and uh, bringing the antenna into resonance in the 20 meter band. And as you can see on the screen here on the uh, antenna analyzer, you've got a very good VSWR. Nothing at all to worry about there, it's really good. Now let me show you what happens if you push the elements in too far. Now you'll see you get a very, very poor dip. If you see that on an antenna analyzer or on a VSWR meter, you see a poor VSWR, it's almost certainly due to the fact that the elements are going too far into the antenna. Now, if you cut them short, you've got to do it bit by bit, say perhaps uh, I don't know, 10, 10 millimeters maximum, I should say, bit by bit. You can do it very easily with a hacksaw. Put, a, put the elements in a vise and a hacksaw will go through it quite easily. But just take bit by bit. If you see this very poor dip, it's showing resonance, but it's very poor, very lossy. Um, you need to reduce the amount of element going into the lower section, the helical wound section. By the way, all the measurements I make with antennas these days, I use the Rig Expert Zoom Antenna Analyzer. There's various models. This one covers um, all the HF bands up to two meters. You can get ones that go up to 70 cents and uh, even higher. But uh, they're very well made, very rugged. I've got this in a case which comes with it and it'll take a bit of knocking about, particularly when it's in its case. Uh, uses a couple of, I, I think they're double A cells. Anyway, they last for ages. Um, I've had this analyzer now for 18 months and I've only, only put the second set of batteries in a couple of months ago. You get a nice graph and you get all sorts of other information, impedance, etc., etc., reactors, all sorts of things. So it's, it's, it's a great investment and uh, it's the sort of thing you buy and you use so often you think, gosh, save so much time. And uh, you don't need to update it really because it'll, it'll last for your lifetime. Anyway, that's the big expert, the Zoom Antenna Analyzer. One of the questions is, okay, I've proved that uh, you get a decent VSWR, but does it work? Well, I'll uh, show you a few, few QSOs I've had with this antenna. At, uh, it's around about um, 15 feet above ground. I call it the pop-up antenna, by the way, because you can telescope it down. Now, put it, it's down here. Now, nobody's gonna, no neighbor's going to complain about that. And you can pop it up in the air with this antenna mast, have a few, few QSOs and pop it down again. I don't think anybody will really uh, worry. Anyway, let's see what I can work on this antenna. Golf 3. Uh, Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, G3, O, J, V. Okay, Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening. 5-9, uh, beautiful audio. My name Roman, QSL. Okay, Roman, from Golf 3, Oscar, Julia, Victor. You're also 5-9, five, 5-9, nine, five, nine. thanks for the nice report. My name is Peter, Papa Echo Tango Echo Romeo. Peter, and uh, you're 5-9, and nine. from Golf 3, Oscar, Julia, Victor. G golf, Golf 3, Oscar, Julia, Victor. Okay, Peter, uh, very nice audio, uh, very strong. Thank you, good luck, good day. 73, bye-bye. 73. Uh, Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, G3, O, J, V. Roger, Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, very good uh, signal, 5, 9 plus, Roger. Yeah, QSL, you're also 5, 9 plus, 5, 9 plus, name is Peter, Papa Echo Tango Echo Romeo, name's Peter, from Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor. Roger, Roger, very good uh, signal, uh, my name is Oscar, uh, thank you, Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, 73, good luck, good X, uh, ciao. Okay, 73, ciao. Thank you, 73, QRZ, Italy, Italy 2, Alpha Uni for Tango. So it worked pretty well, actually. I was very impressed with the uh, dipole. Now, one trick I would tell you um, is that uh, in order to try and get a really low VSWR, having established resonance and uh, trim the, uh, those elements back, the um, uh, tuning uh, uh, parts of the uh, antenna, the top part, I haven't cut those back. You can juggle about and get a slightly lower VSWR and that is achieved by just adjusting one side of the antenna. If you just adjust one side of the antenna then you'll find that you actually can adjust the minimum VSWR. What you're doing is actually you're shifting the feed point slightly. So try that and I uh, think you'll be quite uh, impressed with what you get. So yes, it works extremely well. Um, I would say that it's about an S point down on my half size G5RV 
Um, the antenna is around about 15 feet above ground, but of course the advantage is you can telescope it in and out. And of course you can change bands. I've used uh, the 20 meter antennas to get some pretty good results on 20 meters. As you go higher in frequency, so the antennas become physically larger um, and in terms of the frequency of operation. And so you'd expect the performance to be even better. I haven't gone lower in frequency, like 40 meters. I think if I went down to 40 meters, then the bandwidth would narrow, but I think that might still work. But the great thing about this antenna is it's very portable, and it's what I might call a pop-up antenna. You can pop it up as and when you need it, and then just telescope it down. So I'll put below this video, I'll put a link to the antennas and also to the um, actual telescopic mast I used. And, um, I think if, the, if you've got a situation where you lack of space and so forth, then this might uh, produce the answer. Um, as regards directivity, yes, it is directional. It's not super directional, but there again, as you lower an antenna, in other words, if you're operating it sort of 15 or 20 feet above ground, it does become more omnidirectional, but there is directivity to it. I would say probably around about six or eight dB as you rotate it. It depends on the angle of radiation, of course. So there we are. Um, that's uh, a compact antenna. And if you're thinking about using something like this, then don't hesitate. It does work. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio, take care, and as usual, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.